Hey gang, welcome back to my channel. I have had so much fun with this channel and thank you to everyone who's been joining me uh, for the past month um, as I create these videos, which are all about growing my business and running my business and also growing my family and starting and growing a family at the same time. So for those of you I haven't met, my name is Britt. I am an entrepreneur of a fitness and wellness company. We have three studios here in Dallas and I am also a newlywed and hopefully um, um, will be uh, pregnant with my first baby soon. So I like to talk about how I'm growing my business um, and staying and maintaining my role as a boss babe CEO, but also how I'm balancing that with really trying to become a mom and enjoying my life as a new wife. So um, for those of you who have been following me for a while, thank you. We just celebrated a one month solid. So 2021 was my New Year's resolution to start a YouTube channel. I've always wanted to start a YouTube channel. I love cameras. I love people and I love connecting with people. I'm one of those people who can like memorize everyone's name because there is nothing I love more than people getting to connect with people. So if you've been watching any of these videos and you're enjoying them, or if you just want to make a new friend, please just drop a comment below, like this video, subscribe. I want to get to know you. I want to be there for you. I want to be your friend. It doesn't matter if you're here in Dallas or wherever you are. I think that we all have things in common and we're all just trying to get through life and we're all just trying to make the most out of it and, you know, be our fullest, most self-actualized best selves. So anyway, that was a very long introduction, um, but I wanted to make this video today to talk about fibroids. Whoa, I just went like a whole nother way. Um, but the reason this topic is super important is because um, I am currently going through some fertility treatments, specifically my third IUI cycle, which is intrauterine insemination to try to get pregnant with our first child. And whenever I go to a lot of these appointments, I have to get a lot of sonograms, like a ton of sonograms all the time, check out my uterus, check out my ovaries. And every time I go, the doctor's always like, oh, there's those fibroids, there's those fibroids. And I know for a fact that this is an issue that a lot of women deal with and specifically a lot of black women. So I'm making this video for all women, but I really, really, really have a heart for black women um, because I know that fibroids affect our community more than any other community. My mother has struggled with them. All of my aunts have struggled with them. Uh, my grandmother and I have had a very long journey with fibroids starting when I was about the age of 26. So I think that I have actually been a, a, a very good case because I was able to manage my fibroids early on. Um, and even though they were in a bad situation, once I realized I had them, I'm just grateful for um, information that was available to me with options of how to handle these fibroids, how to remove them, which we're going to talk a lot about today, and how to do it in a way that preserved my fertility. Because my mom and all of her sisters, whenever they had all their fibroids and cysts and all of these issues, I mean, back in the 60s and 70s and even a little bit of the 80s, doctors were kind of like, oh, well, you just need to have a hysterectomy. Like, I mean, you just need to get rid of it. And no one was really like walking them through options. And so if you are struggling with fibroids, please do not think that your chances of having a baby are, you know, null, because that's not true. Is it going to be a little bit harder? Maybe, but maybe not. And so I just kind of want to walk you guys through um, how I got my fibroids removed, um, how I did it laparoscopically. I'm going to show you my scars from my surgeries that I had. And then I'm also going to talk to you about uh, the process that I went through because I've actually had two fibroid removal surgeries. I am 36 years old. I had one fibroid removal surgery when I was 29 and then another one when I was 33. So... um to start from the beginning, um, I never knew that I had fibroids. I always had normal pap smears. Everything was fine. Around my 26th, 27th birthday-ish, um, I just started noticing that my periods were getting very, very heavy. They were getting so heavy that I used to be a consultant um, for a big four firm and I had to travel Mondays through Thursdays for work. So just for one week for work, I would have to pack two boxes of like super plus tampons in my suitcase just to get through Monday through Thursday. It was, so, I was bleeding so much that like I couldn't even sit through a one hour conference like meeting 
in a conference room without like messing up my clothes. It was out of control. So I knew something was not right, but I wasn't having bad cramps. I wasn't, you know, feeling bad, lightheaded, anything like that, but I knew something was wrong. So, um, I went to the gynecologist. Um, actually I didn't even think that much of it. I was like, Oh, I just have heavy periods. But then I went to the gynecologist for my annual exam and I, and she was like, how's everything going? I'm like, I'm just bleeding a lot. Like I don't like cramps. I don't feel bad, but I'm just bleeding a ton. So whenever she did my, um, pap smear, you know, they also like, you know, go like this and like put their finger in you and rub on your uterus to feel anything. She's like, "Mm, I think you might have some fibroids. I'm feeling some lumps. So I had a sonogram after the sonogram. They were like, yeah, you've got quite a few fibroids and you kind of got some options. Um, she was like, you can just leave them, which a lot of women do. Um, fibroids are totally benign. They are not cancerous. Um, they're just annoying. They're just a pain in the butt. So she was like, you can just leave them. She said, um, we can put you on this drug called Lysetta, I believe is what it's called. And it's not going to make the fibroids smaller or anything like that, but it'll just keep you from bleeding so much. And she was like, the third option is that you can get them removed, but that's going to require a surgery. And because your fibroids are so big, I'm going to require to do like an open incision. Like I'm basically going to cut you open. Like you're having a C-section. I'll take the fibroids out, sew it all back up. And then, you know, they'll be gone. But the issue is with fibroids, they come back. So it's not like you can get rid of it and it's gone forever. Like they come back. It's very likely to come back. So I was just kind of like, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't really want to do anything. So I chose the least least passive resistance and I just took the Lysetta, um, the pills that make you like stop bleeding so much. I'm not sure exactly how they work. You can Google it, ask your, ask your doctor, but it worked. Okay. So I took the Lysetta. It was great. And I think that's the right way you say it. And then that kind of made me stop bleeding. But then when I was um, about to turn 29, um, I was starting to explore maybe freezing my eggs um, because for those of you who have watched my egg freezing video, I, you know, I wasn't married. I was like, you know, let's maybe just explore. Let me see how my fertility is and see if maybe this is something I should explore. So I went to a reproductive endocrinologist to um, get my ovaries checked out to see if I should freeze my eggs. And he was like, your ovaries look great. Your AMH is like really, really high. I'm not really worried about your fertility. He's like, but I am really worried about these fibroids. He was like, you know, even if you wanted to be pregnant right now, like I would not encourage you to get pregnant. Like your, your, your uterus is like hostile. And the reason that my uterus is like hostile is because the, the position of the fibroids matters a lot. And mine were submucosal, meaning they were in the lining of my uterus. And that's why it was making my uterus lining shed so much blood. The ones, the types of fibroids that are not problematic are called pedunculated, I believe. And those are just like these big masses that are kind of on the outside of your uterus. So they're not really messing with the uterine lining. But a fibroid that's messing with your uterine lining is really going to make it hard for that embryo to implant, to fertilize, to like, you know, make a baby. So he was like, I really think you need to get these removed. He's like, in my expert opinion, like you need to get these removed. And so then I'm like at a catch 22 because I have a side hustle as a fitness instructor. I finally found my passion. I work out every single day. I travel for work Mondays through Thursdays. It's like, I can't go through a C-section experience. So fortunately, I got some inside information that I want to share with you because I feel like a lot of people don't have this information and they need it. One of my best friends was in his medical school residency at Columbia and he told me that there's this doctor in Boston who is like the god of laparoscopic myomectomies. And so I just kind of did my research. I found this doctor. His name is Dr. Jan Einerson. And um, basically, he is the king of being able to take out fibroids or do hysterectomies, any kind of laparoscopic surgery on the uterus. He can, he's like the king of doing it laparoscopically. Not that he's the king of taking everything out, but he's the king of being able to do stitches and be able to put you all back together in a healthy way um, without cutting you open. And this is the skill that most OBGYNs do not have. And this is why most of the time your OB is going to tell you that you need a hysterectomy or you need to do an open incision process. It's not because it's not possible 
to do it robotically or laparoscopically. It's just they don't have the skills to do it. They haven't done enough laparoscopic or robotic procedures on big fibroids and big cysts. So they're not comfortable and they're not going to say, okay, this is your option. They're only going to give you options that they know how to do. Right. So thank God I had this friend who explained this to me. He was like, so what you need to do is just go into your insurance directory. The name of the procedure you're looking for is called a laparoscopic myomectomy. And just look for doctors or surgeons who have done that procedure a lot of times, because that means they know how to do it. So this doctor that he recommended in Boston had done the procedure like thousands of times, like thousands and thousands and thousands of times. And so just to give you some reference, my fibroids were big. I had a lot of them, like maybe 10 or 13. And the biggest one was like seven and a half centimeters. And then I had smaller ones that were like three, four, two centimeters and stuff like that. I also had dermoid cysts on my ovaries, one on each ovary. And after they took those suckers out, y'all, there was teeth and hair inside of them teeth and hair and like all of this stuff was inside of me. And so I saw a few doctors before I made my final decision. Um, so obviously I talked to my OB guy and she said that she could do it, but she was going to do the open incision. I found another surgeon here in Dallas who specialized more in robotic. She said that she could do it, but she wasn't sure if she could get all of them. She was like, there's just so many. I'll just try to get the big ones. We'll do it robotic. Um, but she seemed pretty confident and I, I would definitely, you know, recommend her. I really liked her. Um, and then Dr. Jan Einerson is the guy, uh, the doctor in Boston at Brigham and Women's Hospital who I ended up using, um, who I did do the procedure with. And fortunately, my insurance was a PPO or whatever. So it didn't matter, you know, where I was. I obviously had to pay for the travel costs to get there. But um, the doctor, as long as they were in the network, it was covered. I actually didn't pay anything out of pocket for any of the, the procedures. Um so before you can think about getting a surgery, they're going to make you get a MRI of your pelvis. So that's a pretty expensive procedure too, because um, you're going to, it's just expensive. So you need to make sure that like your insurance can cover it or figure out the cost. But, you know, basically you go through that donut thing and they take these, they actually, yeah, they injected me with some colored dye. That was weird. They put dye in me so they could see. And then they took pictures of my entire uterus so they could like see my entire uterus and every single fibroid. So the outcomes of that MRI is what I took to the surgeon. So he had a game plan and went in there and did it. So I did that in 2019. And let me show you my scars from this. So I have, he went in here with one thing, uh, tool here with the other, and then here with the other. So I have these three scars and then he put a camera through my belly button and that's where he was able to watch the procedure. So he had two of the laparoscopic tools in here and then he had a camera in my belly button. He was watching on the screen. So he basically went in here and one by one pieced away each fibroid off of my uterus the first time I had the procedure done, they used this tool called a morselator, which is basically like this electric machine that goes in there and just like chops the fibroid up. And then there was like this, this is actually, I think this was the exit tube right here. And then it just chops the fibroid up and then to a small piece and it just suck the fibroid out like that after it was chopped up. But the ADA passed like some rule that people are not allowed, or surgeons are not allowed to use morselators anymore. So the first time I had a fibroid surgery, they used the morselator, chopped the fibroids up, put the cyst inside of like a little baggie, and then put the whole baggie through the morselator and took it out. But they got rid of everything, guys. And I was only out for like a week and a half, two weeks. And I was back to working out in like two weeks, which is like unheard of. It was absolutely awesome. But lo and behold, um, three-ish years later, when I finally decided to freeze my eggs, I was like, I'm going to freeze my eggs. I went back to my reproductive endocrinologist and he's like, these fibroids are back. He's like, and they are big and there's a lot of them. And he basically told me the exact same thing that he had told me four years before. So I was just really annoyed because I really didn't want to go through the surgery again. But he was like, you know, if you really want to have a baby and you want to carry your own, your baby, like 
you probably need to have this surgery again. And it's such a catch 22 because they don't want you to do too many surgeries on your uterus because that just causes all this scar tissue. Um, it's, you know, it's just, they kind of said it's like your uterus is like a Swiss cheese, right? Um, cause you know, they're pe- peeling away tissue every time. So it was a hard decision for me to make, to have that second surgery, but I went ahead and did it. And the reason I did it is because I was able to do it laparoscopically and the laparoscopic version is so much less scars tissue than the open incision. So because I trusted my surgeon, Dr. Einerson at Brigham and Women's, I flew up to Boston again, um, had the surgery again. I was going through Bell's palsy. I was freezing my eggs. It was just too much all at once. But anyway, I had the surgery again. This time he got in there. There were 33 fibroids removed, you guys, 33. And I'm like, it is just beyond me that this can happen inside of me. And, you know, I look at all this natural healing stuff or whatever, but the doctor is just like, you know, it's just genetic. Like your, your mom's had it, you have it. You're just, you're in the prime birthing age, childbearing age, and your body's just going to grow fibroids till you like go through menopause. So, um, I got all 33 of those removed froze my eggs, did that, you know, the, the laparoscopic myomectomy again, um, insurance covered it, thank God. And so here we are now, two years after that, I still have some new fibroids, but he says that there's only like two or three and they're very small. And so we're kind of taking a risk and he's not encouraging me to get those removed just yet. He's like, let's, you know, go ahead and try to get pregnant, do the IUIs. He's like, where they're positioned. One of them is in the lining, but he said it's very, very, very small. And it's like not in the middle of my uterus where an embryo would typically implant. So he doesn't think it's going to be a problem. So I'm just prayerful that, you know, all of the work that I've done at 29 and at 33, um, you know, to get these fibroids removed, to be proactive. I'm just praying that that pays off. And the, you know, now that I'm in a situation where you are trying to conceive that my uterus is not hostile. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's just like this whole process just makes me realize like, what a miracle a baby is, you know, like so many things have to work out to bring a human life. And I mean, it's just making me, I mean, it just, it makes me even more, you know, just grateful for my own life. Cause I'm like, and I think for all of us, like if you're here and if you're alive and if you're breathing, that means that like a miracle happened, you know, for you to, even exist, you know? So I just, it's just making me a lot more grateful for the life that I have and that I'm just alive and I'm a human, like for my own life. Like, you know, even if me and Zach can't have kids, which I I do not believe that's going to happen. I know God's going to bless us. I know we're going to be parents. I know that everything's going to work out. I know that God is faithful. There's not a shadow of a doubt, you know, that, that we're going to be parents. Um, but even if that doesn't happen, I am just so grateful to be here because I know that my life has purpose because just to see and witness all of the little details that have to happen perfectly just for me to be here, I know I'm not a mistake. And I hope that I can just encourage you and let you know that you're not a mistake either and your life has meaning and whether or not you have a kid, your life has meaning, meaning whether or not you become a CEO, your life has meaning, whether or not, you know, you live in a million dollar house, a five, you know, or you live in a apartment for $500 a month. It doesn't matter. Your life has meaning because it is a miracle that you are here. And so hopefully, you know, this is just really helpful for any of you who have fibroids and you're dealing with them. I would just say advocate for yourself. If you want to have kids, then do whatever it takes to preserve your fertility. Um, there are other ways to remove fibroids. There's like a, um, a laser treatment or something like that. That's new. I forget what it's called. Um, but the issue with it is that it also destroys some of your good uterine tissue that's needed, um, to have a baby. So if you want to preserve your fertility, you're really just going to have to think about getting the fibroids removed if they are problematic, if they're positioned in a way that's a, a problematic, but don't take no for an answer. If it's a desire in your heart to be a parent, you know, explore all the options, 
ask your doctor, um, your surgeon, if they're comfortable and if they have experience doing laparoscopic myomectomies, but the myomectomy is just the proper name for removing fibroids. And there are surgeons out there who specialize in this. So if you just do your research, you can find them, but just find someone who can answer your problem and just don't take, that's not, you know, we can't do this as your final answer because it's not. So... I hope that this was helpful. I know it was a lot of information all at once, but I'm here now trying to get pregnant. I've had two laparoscopic myomectomies four years apart, and now I just do have a little bit of fibroids, but I'm praying that they're not problematic and our miracle baby will be on the way. So keep in touch, you guys. Let me know if there's any other topics you'd love for me to cover. And um, I'm sending you baby dust to all of you you know, hoping moms who are TTC and um, anyone who just is struggling with fibroids, comment below. I'd love to help you. I'd love to be there for you. All right. Bye guys. Y'all have an awesome day.